If you think about in 1909, when the Harris Street Association was formed and registered for the Orb trademark, um, you know these must have been really hard and difficult times. And, and it took real vision to see that the Harris Street industry needed protecting way back then. Had the, the kind of the same engagement inside this realm? I think perhaps in the past we were guilty of not singing quite so loud as we could have done about the complexity of the process, about the beauty of the process, and indeed trying to explain that the weaving is just part of Harris Tweed. Because even once the uh, weaving is finished at the home of the weaver, it will be transferred back to the mill where finishing takes place. And this is where the balance of tradition and modernity kicks in. We still finish in a very, very traditional manner, but we're always looking to tweak that Tweak it to make the fabric better, but also to respect the traditions and indeed to give a variety. So we do three finishes, three weights. Uh Carding is done. Your carded wool has no strength, so you can't really do anything with it until you put it on the spinning frames. So you remember the big spools were moved onto the spinning frames by the operators. And what we're going to do on the spinning frame is put that twist, mechanical twist, into the yarn, which then gives you a, a, a yarn you can use for weaving, and it's a, a product you can move on to the next stages of production. And the, the twist serves to hold everything together and give it strength. Absolutely. It right? So the warpers will have prepared over 1,400 individual warp threads, and each and every one must be the exact colour and in the exact order. The weaving card that's been prepared for the warper is then transferred to the weaver, along with the warp and the weft threads. So they have all their tools delivered to their home, ready for that project, that next project that they're going to work on as weavers. Um, we have a van and a lorry that go round the island of Lewis and Harris every day delivering to the home weavers. That's lovely. So, Brian Wilson. But also that there were a number of mills at that time and they, which I think is probably you know, quite common in, the, in this industry, that they were more interested in fighting each other than they were in seeing the world changing around them. And between these two factors, the North American market was, was virtually wiped out within a very short space of time. Uh, and that was the beginning of a decline in the, in the Harris Tweed industry. Um, but I think it survives as an industry here because of the regulation that surrounds it. Yes. Um, it, it, it survives because of the definition which the, the fabric must be made from pure virgin wool, hand woven at the home of the weaver in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. And if any one of these criteria was lost, then the industry would be lost because mm -hmm. if it could be made somewhere else and if it could be made differently and called Harris Tweed, mm -hmm. then it would be made somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, it can't be, therefore it is our industry as a community uh, and, but integral to it is that definition and these, uh, call them restrictions or tell, call them, I would call them assets. Mm. That's interesting, it's fascinating even almost because um, uh, sometimes we look upon this kind of uh, strict laws and strict regulation more as an obstacle, you know, to creativity and, uh, and what I discovered this last two days, it's, it's not, an, not only it's not an obstacle, but it's a, uh, it helps preserving uh, not only um, from an economic standpoint, but also from a quality standpoint. That is to say, and I understand that um, this connection between the weaver 